Okay, I'm recording this for the purposes of remembering how it comes apart. Just to let you know what that is, well, this was inside here. This is what they call a stator. Um, goes on this side, right? Very pretty, very shiny. I decided to tackle it myself because after looking it up everywhere online, it looked pretty straightforward. So I thought, let me give it a shot. So right here, what I have is a spragless setup, meaning this guy does not ratchet. It's basically a solid piece that freewheels, whereas this guy actually ratchets. Now, the way they tell you to put this on um, online, it mostly tells you to put it on clockwise. You know what I mean? So basically, uh, transmission side of the hub, which is this side, obviously, uh, it has to ratchet clockwise according to what I've seen uh, on the internet so that's the goal man this thing's okay so apparently this has to go face down because it ratchets and it has to ratchet clockwise uh, so transmission facing down it has to ratchet clockwise according to the Hughes performance um, installation video this guy right here is a bearing so now I have to work on getting this uh, internal or external depending on how you uh if you're a millwright this would be an external if you're a regular joe Schmo mechanic this would be an internal <laughs> so it all depends on how you were taught so let me get that guy there you go ow wow careful holy shit these these suckers are sharp. I wonder if the fluid was doing that. Jeez, I have no idea they were that sharp. Wow, careful. Jesus. Yeah, be careful. This bitch is sharp. Now, I don't know if that's supposed to be like that or the shearing force of, and the heat. Yeah, they're not supposed to be like that. I think the, the heat of it freewheeling when I was going on street drives probably sharpened it, but I could be wrong. You guys could tell me in the comments if this is something that's supposed to be that sharp. So I'm going to flip it, take it off, flip it again so I have the right side up. <clears throat> so yeah, it's just a big solid hunk. So it's only going to spin one way, right? It's just only going to spin one way and not ratchet and lock. Uh, it's just going to freewheel all the time. Um, and then I guess depending on how the fluid is flowing in this guy, it'll start to eventually turn everything. But, you know, low RPMs, low load conditions are sustained. It's just uh, freewheeling, not doing anything. So, interesting. Okay, well, kind of got the gist of it. It can go either way. Yeah, it can go either way. I don't know why I flipped it. Maybe it was just easier for me. Okay, let me... uh figure it out and then I'll film what I think is the proper way it should go together. So in theory, this bigger one that has the four keyways, no bevels, so you would think it's semi-directional or uh, multi, you know, doesn't matter which way it goes. That's what I'm thinking. So that goes in there, but I'm also thinking that one goes underneath and one goes on top based on what this looks like. You know what I mean? So this guy, one of them has to face down <laughs> The other guy has to face up so that it mimics this operation here. Just, again, I'm just kind of going by what I see. And this guy has to be sandwiched in between the two. So let me uh, play with it and see how it goes. Okay, based on the video I took, this guy faces up because this guy faces up and it matches because the bottom of this piece does not match. And I'm sure the bearing is going to sit in there nicely. So this guy goes up. That means if it spins clockwise... I mean, this guy goes in, facing down, and I have to put the keys in there. I have to make sure the keys line up, so let me do that. Good thing I took video. So this guy faces down, and it sits on the shoulder, basically. So I can't go any further. This guy goes down, and it will bottom on that piece. This guy ratchets counterclockwise I'm sorry clockwise facing the train side yep so I just spun it clockwise to make sure 
it spins clockwise, this guy goes in and align the keyway. Okay, so far so good. And theoretically, I put this guy on and the snap ring and the bearing, and uh, that's it, right? Let's see. Yeah, we should have room for the snap ring. Yeah, let's put that sucker in. Uh, okay, they provided a snap ring, put it in, and this uh, bearing goes facing down. Guys, I, I think that's it. If that was it, I don't know why I thought this was the most complicated thing on the planet, install. But the only thing I'm doubting myself on, which I really shouldn't be because I took video of everything, is the install. So the nice thing is I'm not installing the converter today, okay? I wanted to do this just to say it's done. And all I have to do is put it back in the converter, bolt it down. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to put it back in the converter, bolt it down. But what I want from you guys, and I really actually want this, is for you guys to tell me if I installed it right or not. Okay, for those of you that have done this before, 400 transmission experts um, or Sprague installers, did I do it right? Did I install it with it ratcheting? Let me just show you how it ratchets. Clockwise on the transmission side. I just cut myself again. Jesus Christ, everything's sharp in this motherfucker. So it is and it doesn't go the other way. So I guess this provides torque multiplication when it allows this whole mechanism instead of freewheeling to lock up and actually apply more torque. Who knows, maybe, but uh, let me know. If I installed this wrong, guys, I welcome, I actually want your comments. This will be a step-by-step -step situation. I wanna make sure I installed it right, but from everything I can tell, I think I installed it right. Yeah, I mean, snap rings in, ratcheting clockwise facing down. This guy, there's an o-ring that seals it. I put the lid back on so it wouldn't get contaminated. The bearing is still there, if I'm not mistaken. No, that's not a bearing. That's not a bearing? Maybe, that, maybe that's a bearing. Is that a bearing? Let me see. It has to be a bearing. It has to be a bearing. Yep, yeah, there's a snap ring here. And it looks to be a bearing. So, okay, Alex, don't fuck around. Don't do too much bullshit. Stay, stay in your lane. Put this guy here. <laughs> and all should be good to go. I mean, I, I, you know, to be honest with you, I have no idea how this fucking works. Let me see, so, it ratchets to the right. Huh, if only I could grasp the concept, I'm not that smart. But, I've seen plenty of videos and, and it's still kind of like black magic to me. I'm wondering if that has to key in somewhere, but... Yeah, it's on there pretty good. I don't see any issue. <laughs> you know, like, from a millwright background, everything has to key in. You know what I mean? Like, but apparently, this is all fluid-driven, and as long as it has a ratcheting mechanism situation here, I guess that's all it needs. So, I'm going to end the video once I put this lid back on and bolt it down, and I'm going to reach out to you guys. Did I do it right? If I did, great. If I didn't, let me know what I did wrong, and I'll fix it. So, that'll be the video of the day. Okay, so on today's episode of Did I Do It Right? Did I Do It Right? I really want your feedback. I've never done that, but it looks, based on my mechanical brain, that's kind of the way it goes, based on the, the, the previous pattern, where it's shallow here and it has a little seat area for the bearing, and where the other one basically mimicked that exact same setup based on the parts that I had. So hopefully I put it in right and then I'll be able to work on it this weekend. Got a couple things going on this week. Got a show pretty soon. Uh, a couple shows I gotta do and I'm gonna travel out of, out of state for a little bit. So I'll try to get you guys as much content as I possibly can. But if I did it right, let me know. If I did it wrong, let me know and I'll fix it. Thanks for listening guys. Talk to you later.